Hey guys, welcome back to Project Cummins. What we're going to be doing today is talking about water methanol injection. Now the whole point to do water methanol injection is to inject a mist of water and methanol mixture into your intake air to cool down the oncoming air for the cylinder. So how does this work and how does it help us? Well, we're going to have to start on the other side of the engine on the turbo. We know that our turbo is driven by the exhaust gases coming out of the engine into the turbine wheel. That turbine wheel is connected to a shaft and that shaft is connected to our compressor wheel. That compressor wheel brings in oncoming air from the outside, brings it around the turbo and compresses it, but when it does, it gains heat from the exhaust gases and that heat warms up that air. So that as the air comes out of the turbo, it travels out and into the intercooler. Now the one the purpose of the intercooler is to use oncoming air as you're driving to charge the air from your turbo to cool it down. So it leaves the intercooler and by now it's it's cooled down but it may not be as cool as you'd like it. So we're coming out <clears throat> and we got our cooler air and then we hit our water methanol injection. It sprays a very very fine mist. And, and mixes with the air and atomizes. And as it atomizes, it will evaporate into the air, causing heat to, to dissipate from the ambient air, cooling down your, your, your on-charging air. Now that was a twin tongue twister. Blah. The port where it comes into your intake and sprays a fine mist is almost like this bottle of cleaner I have for the board. Through the little nozzle tip sprays out finely misted water. I really can't see it on camera. But that is atomized water basically. Doing just the same thing as that. but in Now water atomizing and evaporating and dissipating of heat and I'm this all sounds so wonderful but how how does it that even work I mean of course you know things get a little cooler when you throw some water on them but doesn't water put out flame I don't understand well, here's how we can start to make a little bit more sense of that you see water is made up of uh, two elements hydrogen and oxygen. We know it as H2O because there are two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule. That is a water molecule. Same thing. So equals. Now when you have these water molecules around other ambient air. And the reason I don't say other oxygen molecules is because if you remember in past How and Why episodes, I explained to you that ambient air is not all oxygen. We also breathe in other gases, but you can check that video out in the description below for more information. So we have all these other molecules. Okay. Now with the finely sprayed atomized mist of water in the ambient air all traveling together after the intercooler, because the water molecules will be so small that they will be able to take on heat more easily. Once water takes on so much heat, the hydrogen and oxygen molecules separate. And by separating, they take from them heat. So we got air being sprayed into a charged uh, ambient air, and as it's being sprayed in an atomized small amount, 
takes on heat from the ambient air around it, leaving the air colder, and it starts to split the water and evaporate. And at that point, you have, ta-da, colder air. Now, colder air, just like in a past How and Why episode I explained, cold air molecules come together. So, they are more dense. The more dense your air is, the more oxygen that is in it. The more oxygen that's in it, the more uh, power you receive out of your combustion cycle. So, cold air is good. And as we saw in the diagram before, that cooler air means cooler EGTs. A cooler EGT can mean saving your turbo, not melting it. Um, also, several other problems down the line. But cooler EGT, cooler inlet temps, and it just it helps you all the way around. It, it goes, it's a... Uh, it's like a vicious circle. Now, cooling is not the only effect that water has in the water methanol injection system. Water can also go on into the cylinder as, as actual water molecules, like not all of them evaporated. And as the cylinder comes up and creates pressure and heat, it'll heat up and explode with the ignition from the fuel and the rapid expansion from the water turning into a liquid uh, state into a gas state very quickly creates a lot of pressure outward. So you get the steam engine effect as well as cooling. Now, let's not forget that this is a mixture between water and methanol. So the methanol is an alcohol, and even though this is not methanol, it is an alcohol. Something that you can see at home is you can go and get some water and pour it on the, the back of your hand, on one hand, and then take the alcohol and pour it on the back of your other hand, and you'll see that it has a cooling effect that sticks around much longer. Not to mention, alcohol also burns as a fuel. So there's another way that you're creating power. So what are the benefits of doing this system and when is it okay to install such a system? Do other upgrades need to be done first? So let's break this up into two parts of this question. What are some of the benefits? Some of the benefits we have is cooling prior to the ignition. Uh, cooling the air prior to ignition. <clears throat> cooling down your EGTs. More power, more boost. There's a steam engine effect, which means also steam cleans the inside of your engine. And really, this is easy power. So when do we add this? Or do we need to upgrade turbos first? Or do we need to upgrade um, fuel pump first? Or what is it that we need to do to be able to, to install this? Nothing. This can be installed on a completely stock truck and have beneficial effects. Um, it does create more power. It'll help you with your EGTs and keeping your uh, EGTs lower in acceptable ranges so it won't melt turbos or or uh, heat up your uh, valve seats or, or cause damage air. Or, I mean, it's very, very beneficial. Hot is bad and cool is more power because cooler has more oxygen. More oxygen creates... Uh, warmer power stroke by compressing more air. More air means it's able to burn fuel better. There, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Water methanol is great to do for about just any of our trucks. It's only when you start doing too much. Because, there, I mean, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Um, you can uh, get your engine addicted to meth, is, is what I call it. Is, is you're pushing too much through your air and pushing your engine too hard when it's not built for it. So using the system would be great and can save you miles per gallon anywhere from, let's say, one to five. I mean, depending on how serious your system is and what your uh, mixing ratio is with your water and methanol. Uh, don't go any... I would try and stay about the 50-50 area. Um... Or to make it real simple, stay at the 35 to 65 area, which is 35% methanol and 65% water with just negative 20 blue window washing fluid. Because that's what it is. It's water, water and methanol. I mean, it just has blue dye in it. So, <clears throat> there's a good way to start. 
And that kind of a mixture uh, added moderately probably gets you a mile and a half to two miles per gallon more you know, on your daily driving and highway and can really help uh, when pulling and putting a load under on the truck or even going uphill. So who should do this? Anyone should do this, really. I mean, it's not that bad. Um, how much are these kind of kits? Well, I mean, it can get pretty expensive. It can be as low as 250 with do-it-yourselves, um, all the way up to 1000 and more for uh, ones with complete uh, separate tanks and upgraded pumps and have your own uh, map sensors and injecting computer. I mean, it can get pretty serious. So that's an overview of how water methanol benefits your engine. And if you guys have any more questions, just let me know for our next episode of How and Why. And we'll see you guys later.